Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, today, as we are continuing our Bible study on the book of Exodus, let us continue reflecting about and having a study on the 25th chapter of Exodus. And yesterday, we studied about tabernacle, the importance of the Lord is collecting money or collecting the offering to have the tabernacle. And I have explained to you how the tabernacle looked like. The whole tabernacle, what does it mean? What all things are there in the tabernacle? And then we have seen the, the three sections. The ho most holy place, the holy of holies, and the holy place, and the courtyard. And today, verse 10 onwards, we read, it is God is asking Moses to prepare Ark of the Covenant. Ark of the Covenant. So, they shall make an Ark of Acacia wood, it shall be two and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half high. So, before we speak about this, today I would like to speak to you the, specific, the importance of Ark of the Covenant. Now, before, as an introduction, let me tell you something. We all have seen that comparison study. We know there is an old law, there is a new law, old covenant, new covenant, and... Um, we have a Moses in the Old Testament. We have new Moses, that is Jesus. We have old Adam and we have new Adam. We have old Eve and we have new Eve, that is Mother Mary. And um, we also saw so many comparisons like this. And we know Moses, under the leadership of Moses, there was an exodus. Now under the leadership of Jesus, a new exodus to the new promised land. Our true promised land is heaven. So we are all in the new exodus moment. We are all in the going through the wilderness. And that is why all whatever Egyptians, Israelites experienced in the wilderness, we also will experience. When they were in the wilderness, there was animals attack, evil spirits, at, uh, enemies having attack, pandemic, and so many kinds of problems. And this is exactly what we are also going through in this new Exodus moment. And we know in the Old Testament, all throughout their life in the Exodus time, the only way they could survive, the only food for their journey was manna. And in the New Testament, we know what is manna. Manna is Jesus Christ, the living bread, and that is coming from heaven. And we also saw the different uh, idea about um, uh, the old symbolic uh, things of the Old Testament and the connection with the New Testament. Now, there is a very important question now. If the New Testament journey is a new exodus, in, there is an old exodus and new exodus. In the old exodus, Moses was the leader. In the new exodus, Jesus is the leader. In the old exodus, there was manna. In the new exodus, we have Eucharist. And in the old ex exodus, the water was given to them to drink. And that is how they survived. In the new exodus, Jesus said, I am the living water. And all those who are thirsty come to me and drink from me. So Jesus himself is the living water that gives thirst and satisfies the th thirst of the people. And there is one more thing that is in the Old Testament. Not one more thing, but the most important thing after Moses. The, in the Old Testament, exodus is Ark of the Covenant. Because if you look into the whole history of Exodus, the Ark of the Covenant has got one of the most powerful importance in the whole Exodus. Everyone used to follow the Ark of the Covenant. Where the Ark of the Covenant rests, everyone used to stay around the Ark of the Covenant. When the Ark of the Covenant is lifted up, it is a clear sign, it is time for us to go. It is time for us to go, march forward. So there was no common bell ringing or some uh, alarm a clock or something to remind the people it's time to go. The only alarm, the only bell ringing, only the reminder is the moment the priest comes and takes, lips the Ark of the Covenant, everybody understands this is the time to leave, the leave the place. The moment the Ark of the Covenant is resting, resting on a place, then everybody knows this is the time to camp. And they camp around, around the Ark of the Covenant in and uh, uh, in a ark of the covenant is kept in the tabernacle and around the tabernacle in the sign of the cross they used to camp so that is how they used to camp praise the lord thank you jesus praise you jesus now the very important thing in the old testament in the exodus this ark of the covenant was leading them ark of the covenant is the sign of the presence of god and what all things that are kept in the ark of the covenant three, there were three things that was kept in the ark of the covenant the the tablets, the ten tablets, the, the two tablets of the ten commandments, and then manna and the budded staff of Aaron. These are the three things kept inside the Ark of the Covenant. 
and people used to come and bow down in front of the ark of the covenant they used to worship god almighty by bowing down in front of the ark of the covenant because inside the ark of the covenant there is symbol of god's uh, symbolic the prototype of god's presence is there inside the ark of the covenant now in the new exodus there should be an ark of the covenant without which this new exodus will be incomplete because in the old testament there is everything and the same the original is in the new testament so without the ark of the covenant in the new testament everything will be uh, meaningless so there should be an ark of the covenant in the new testament so we should know what who is this ark of the covenant in the new testament when i say who it is also very important manna is a ordinary food but we know who is the manna in the new testament jesus so like this ark of the covenant in the old testament who is the ark of the covenant in the new testament and that is what we are going to see today and we all know from the history from the church fathers from the historical understanding of the uh, the church we all know this ark of the covenant is mother mary so that is what we are going to prove it today through the word of god how do we prove biblically that it is mother mary who is the ark of the covenant in the new testament so we are going to see that and therefore listen very carefully so that you may understand everything it so now in the old testament in today's bible reading we are supposed to read that and we will read it only after this introduction talk because god is asking moses to prepare the ark of the covenant there is a process to prepare the ark of the covenant because god knows i am preparing a fitting vessel to contain the most important things of the exodus which are the most important thing of the exodus the two tablets of commandment the manna the living bread and the budded rose these are the most holy thing among the israelites so all these three things are going to be kept in this box that box is called ark of the covenant and in that ark these fitting thing these holy things are going to be kept that means ark in itself is only a vessel ark in itself is only a box there is nothing special but why the ark of the covenant is so important because of the things inside of it so this is we need this is what we need to understand the ark in itself it is only a box and people used to carry this and no one used to touch it not even the priest they they have to they, they used to use a pole they used to use two poles and with that pole they hold on to the pole if anyone touches this they is this they dies so that is what we see because the ark of the covenant is supposed to be so holy and it is considered as the most holy thing and that is why the ark of the covenant is kept in the most holy place holy of holies so so that is very important so these are the three things that is kept in this box therefore the ark of the covenant is called the fitting vessel to contain the presence of god fitting vessel so if that is the case when the in the new testament when god sent his only son the almighty god equal to god the father when god the father sent his only son to this world he searched for a fitting vessel to contain him inside a fitting vessel and this fitting vessel should be built built or created in such a way that it is a fitting vessel and that is what we are going to see when god is asking moses to prepare the prepare the ark of the covenant what are the instructions that was given here given there that is a clear sign how important this box is how important this ark is the same way god knew i'm going to send my son therefore the vessel that is going to contain my son should be so fitting and holy and that is why the church also believes the immaculate conception she is prepared before time beforehand just like god is making moses to prepare the ark of the covenant before time before the 10 uh, commandments before the tablets and before the budded rods budded staff of iron god is preparing the ark of the covenant and with acacia wood acacia wood that is uh, with with which the the ark of the covenant is built acacia wood is called immortal wood immortality and uh, and uh, imperishable wood in according to jewish understanding and also greek mythology the acacia wood is considered as the imperishable one immortal one and complete pure one that is called acacia wood and god is specifically asking moses to make the ark of the covenant with the acacia wood and we will go, come to that point but before that let me establish that it is mother mary who is the ark of the covenant let's read hebrew chapter 9 verse 3 onwards hebrew chapter 9 verse 3 onwards we read like this hebrew chapter 9 verse 3 behind the second curtain was tent called the holy of holies god saint paul i mean the writer of the hebrew letters of hebrew uh, is explaining about the temple the tabernacle the the courtyard the holy place and the most holy of holies 
Behind the second curtain was a tent called to the Holy of Holies. In the host, Holy of Holies, what did they keep? Verse 4. In it stood the golden altar of incense and the ark of the covenant overlaid on all sides with gold in which there were golden urn holding the manna and Aaron's rod that budded and the tablets of the covenant. The Bible says inside this ark of the covenant, these three things were there. What are the three things? Manna is a symbol of Jesus Christ, the living bread. The Aaron's rod that budded, symbol of the high priest, the true high priest, that is Jesus himself. The tablets of the covenant, the law of Old Testament law. The true law is the New Testament law. Therefore, the tablets of covenant is also symbol of Jesus Christ. And all these three things, manna, the rod and the tablets symbolizes Jesus. And these symbols are inside the Ark of the Covenant. And that is a clear sign. It is the Ark of the Covenant is Mother Mary because in the Mother Mary's womb, the Almighty God was came and born. And it is this vessel that contained these three things, manna, the, holy, uh, the, the high priest, the priesthood and also the new law inside Mother Mary's womb. And Mother Mary is that the most fitting, fitting vessel to carry the Almighty God inside. And therefore, the church fathers, the Holy Catholic Church, from the day one, from the first century, always called Mother Mary as the Ark of the Covenant, new Ark of the Covenant. Now, if, that is the, if Mother Mary is the Ark of the Covenant, we will see so many parallelism, just like we saw so many parallelism between Manna and the new Manna. And Moses and new Moses. There should be many parallelism from the Old Testament and New Testament. We will see some of those uh, parallelism between Mother Mary and the Ark of the Covenant. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, Ark of the Covenant. There was a time Ark of the Covenant just disappeared. Ark of the Covenant disappeared when the Jerusalem Temple was destroyed. When Jerusalem Temple was destroyed, the first Jerusalem Temple was destroyed. At that moment, just before the Jerusalem Temple's destruction, that Ark of the Covenant disappeared. And along with the destruction, when the destruction is taking place in one place, the Ark of the Covenant is taken by Jeremiah to another place and is disappeared. Now we all know, also know when Jesus, the new temple, so Jesus is the new temple. And the new temple, when Jesus was destroyed on Mount Calvary, and that is the time we see Mother Mary last time, and again, we see, of course, in the, uh, in the Pentecost time. And after that, we don't have any clue about Mother Mary. Mother Mary also disappeared. And we believe Mother Mary is taken to heaven. And of course, is Mother Mary is taken to heaven. And after that, we see the Ark of the Covenant and Mother Mary together in heaven. Remember, Ark of the Covenant disappeared in the Old Testament. Mother Mary disappeared in the New Testament. But in the book of Revelation, chapter 11, last word, we see the Ark of the Covenant and also Mother Mary together in heaven. Why these two words are kept together? Because the Ark of the Covenant is itself, is the new Mother Mary. We read like this. Then God's temple in heaven was opened and the Ark of His Covenant was seen within His temple. And there were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and heavy hail. See, God's temple is heavenly in the heaven. The God's temple is open. We may wonder, when, did, when was it taken away? Moses was taken away to heaven. Mother Mary was taken away to heaven. Enoch was taken away to heaven. Elijah was taken away to heaven. And Mother May, and Ark of the Covenant is also taken away to heaven. We don't know, but we, we don't see anywhere. Such a most important ark is not seen even after 2,000, 3,000 years. Israel with his all sophisticated weapons and power, they are not able to identify and find out this ark of the covenant still. There are some duplicate ark of the covenants in different places. One in Ethiopia and some other places. But even Jewish people know that is not the original one so they don't care to take it. So, But remember the ark of the covenant is not there. But Bible says where exactly it is. It is in heaven. Now, before that we need to know where exactly, when was it taken away? When Jerusalem temple was destroyed, we read like this, 2 Maccabees chapter 2 was uh, 1 onwards. 2 Maccabees chapter 2 was 1 onwards, we read like this. This is very important. Solomon decided to build a temple for the name of the Lord. 2 Maccabees, sorry. So, we, let's read those passages. And in that, that, when Jerusalem temple was going to be destroyed, God knew the Ark of the Covenant is the most important holy thing that makes the temple holy. So, God wanted to protect this Ark of the Covenant. Therefore, God commanded to Jeremiah, God commanded to Jeremiah and said like this, 
second maccabees chapter 2 verse 3 onwards 3 or 4 onwards we can uh, start so we read like this second maccabees chapter um 2 verse 4 onwards it was also in the same document that the prophet having received an oracle prophet is jeremiah here ordered that the tent and the ark should follow with him so he decided he, he got an oracle from god and said take the tent and small tent and the ark of the covenant ark of the covenant and should come with him and that he went out to the mountain where moses had gone up we know mount nebo mount nebo that is the mount nebo in which moses was taken up to heaven to the same mountain jeremiah takes the ark of the covenant and had seen the inheritance of god was continue was 5 jeremiah came and found a cave dwelling and there is a, a small cave inside the mount nebo and then he brought there the tent and the ark and the altar of incense he kept everything inside the cave and he sealed the entrance of it he kept all these holy things inside the in, in the mountain mount nebo and in the, there was a cave and he kept the ark of the covenant and the tent and the incense he kept it inside and sealed it the incense is a symbol of cloud of glory and ark is the symbol of vessel who carries the holy one remember there is cloud of glory the power of god glory is the the cloud of glory is the power of god you know mount sinai mount sinai is like this and around the mount sinai there was the cloud of glory covers it and the moses used to go inside through this cloud he goes inside and go to the mountain from there he is to get the word of god the word of god comes from inside the glory from inside the glory inside the overshadowing of the power of god he used to collect the word of god and come down and speak to the people so that is why the incense is very important incense is the symbol of the cloud of glory that covers when you have holy mass there is incense the incense the when the club the, the smoke comes up it's a symbol of the cloud of glory that is surrounding us and that is why in every holy mass and mostly when there is a special day special feast celebration you have incense the whole church is full of smoke the incense that is a symbol of the presence of god power of god in the symbol of glory of god covering all of us and moses used to go through this cloud and hear the word of god now jeremiah sealed ark of the covenant inside the cave and sealed it there were some people who were following jeremiah who were helping to carry this ark of the covenant some of those who followed him came up intending to mark the way the way but could not find it because they all know this is the most precious thing so they want to secretly come and take it maybe uh, uh, they want to honor it or maybe pray in front of it so they try to mark the way so that they can come it come and take it or speak uh, one rate uh, adore in front of it later so they try to mark the way the way but could not find it though they mark it they could not find it later and jeremiah came to know when jeremiah learned of it he rebuked them he was so angry and he rebuked them and declared the place shall remain unknown now he is giving a prophecy what is the prophecy the place shall remain unknown until god god gathers his people together again to show his mercy until until means this ark of the covenant will be remaining unknown until god gathers his people together again to show his mercy what is this in, in gathering of the people in gathering of the people means the new exodus bringing the people together and jesus is the one who gathered all the 12 tribes together and made the new israel that is why jesus collected 12 disciples symbolizing the 12 tribes and jesus told them and you will sit on 12 tribe 12 thrones and will rule over the whole israel so the new israel the in gathering of the people is the coming of the messiah so because jewish people always believed the messiah will come and gather all the people together all the scattered tribes will be gathered together when the messiah comes so there is already a prophecy gathering of the people means it is it is the in gathering of the people means it is the coming of the messiah praise the lord now jesus now jeremiah is prophesying the ark of the covenant will be hidden until god gathers his people together again and shows his mercy means the ark of the covenant will be hidden until jesus the messiah comes that is a, in short that is the meaning the place shall be remain this gad ark of the covenant will be unknown hidden until the messiah comes now when the messiah comes this ark of the covenant will be revealed what will be the symptom what how do how do how are you going to identify oh this is the ark of the covenant 
How are you going to identify? And then Jeremiah said, When the Messiah comes, the cloud of glory will overshadow the Ark of the Covenant. And then you know this is the one. Then the Lord will disclose these things and the glory of the Lord and the cloud will appear and they were shown in the case of Moses and as Solomon asked the place should be specially consecrated during the time of Moses what happened? Mount Sinai. How does people came to know there is, there is presence of God on Mount Sinai? Because glory of God overshadowed the Mount Sinai. How did the people come to know there is anointing, there is presence of God in the Ark of the Covenant? The glory of God, the power of God overshadowed overshadowed the Ark of the Covenant. How did the Jerusalem temple, you know when Solomon built the Jerusalem temple, how did they know God is here? The glory of God, the power of God overshadowed the Jerusalem temple and then they knew God is here. And if that's the case, just like in, during the time of Moses, how cloud, glory of God covered the Mount Sinai during the time of Solomon, how the cloud of God, the, mount, the power of God, the glory of God covered the Jerusalem temple, on that day, you will see the glory of God covering the Ark of the Covenant. And the, where is this Ark of the Covenant then? Where is it fulfilled? If you read Luke chapter 1 verse 34, when an angel came to Mother Mary and spoke to her, Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? Virgin means pure, completely pure. How is it possible since I am a virgin? Then verse 35 we read like this, the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. See, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. This is exactly the same word is used about the Mount Sinai. The same word is used about the Mark of the Covenant. The same word is used about the Temple, Jerusalem Temple. The, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And therefore, the child that is born is holy. Praise the Lord. That is why Jesus is considered as the Messiah. If the overshadowing is not there, then the child that is born is not holy. Because only in the holy place where the overshadowing of the glory and power is there, something holy will come out. Mount Sinai, from Mount Sinai, we came to know everything that came out from Mount Sinai is holy. Because there was glory of God overshadowing it. Everything that comes out of the Ark of the Covenant is holy because there is the glory of God covering it. Glory of God covering the Jerusalem temple. And now God says very clearly, it is Mother Mary, it is the Ark of the Covenant. Where the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Praise the Lord. And then, after that, you know, the, 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 uh, the Ark of the Covenant disappeared. And then, just like Ark of the Covenant is disappeared there, and here, Mother Mary also disappeared after the Pentecost experience. Then we will see Mother Mary and the Ark of the Covenant together. Where? Let's read the last word of God, Revelation chapter 11, the last chapter, love word. Then the God's temple in heaven was opened, and the Ark of His Covenant was seen within His temple. And there were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and heavy hail. All these reactions. So theophany, it is called theophany. And then a great portent appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, with the moon, under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. See, the Ark of the Covenant and the woman is connected here. Both were in the same place. I saw the Ark of the Covenant and he didn't say anything about Ark of the Covenant. Suddenly he speaks about a woman clothed with the sun. It's a clear sign. These two word of God attached to each other is a clear sign of the presence of Mother Mary and consider Mother Mary as the new Ark of the Covenant. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And now you must be wondering why the Catholics are carrying Mother Mary statue and going for a procession especially on, on the feast of Holy Rosary, that is tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow we celebrate the feast of Our Lady of Holy Rosary. So, the, why we do have procession of Mother Mary in Lourdes, we have procession of Mother Mary. Fatima, we have procession of Mother Mary. Uh, carrying the statue of Mother Mary or picture of Mother Mary, we have a huge procession. It remembers, it reminds the procession of Israel carrying the Ark of the Covenant. Ark of the Covenant. When Israelis carried the Ark of the Covenant and went around the Jericho wall six times and on the seventh time when they shouted praising God keeping the Ark of the Covenant in the front the whole Jerusalem wall fell down. The fortress which was unbreakable fell down into smashes because of the power of their praises and the intercession of the new Ark of the Covenant. Praise the Lord. Now this is exactly what happens in every church. We have this procession. Official procession carrying Mother Mary's statue or picture. And we have this procession. It reminds us the, the procession of Israelites around their enemies. Around the Jericho wall. 
and when they were going through wilderness they were they were following the ark of the covenant they looked at the fall uh, ark of the covenant but the ark of the covenant never looked anywhere just looking move, move um, looking forward and moving forward and that is why the holy catholic church says through mary to jesus through mary to jesus why israelites came to the holy land through ark of the covenant they didn't look at the road they looked at the ark of the covenant and moved forward and ark of the covenant reached the holy land first and the rest reached there they only followed the ark of the covenant wherever ark of the covenant goes they went where the ark of the covenant rested they rested when the ark of the covenant get up and move on and they move on that's how the old testament israel if that's the case the new israel should be like that we should follow mother mary to jesus and she will never take us anywhere else because she is the lighting the god the 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 star that that leads in front of us the morning star that leads us the real star that leads us in the olden times people used to travel in the sea looking at the star and the star used to guide them in the new testament we also know the magi were guided by the star and mother mary is the star that leads us to the right place the, the final destination place praise the lord now there is one more connection that you can see you know in the old testament there was a time the ex, the ark of the covenant was stolen by philistines and then this ark of the covenant was taken away because of the sin of israelites because when the israelites commit sin they lose the ark of the covenant my dear brothers and sisters all those who are in unholiness they cannot recite holy rosary anyone who is in unholiness it is impossible for them to re recite the holy rosary if you are in holiness it is very easy for you to be concentrated in praying the holy rosary because mother mary's presence will be there always so strongly and in the ark of the covenant when the ark of the covenant was taken away later the ark of the covenant was kept in one house and we see some connections here in order when david became the king of israel the first priority he gave was to bring the ark of the covenant and establish in the most holy place that was his intention the new david is jesus jesus david is the king of israel and jesus is the son of david the new david who is sitting on the same throne and the moment jesus went to heaven the first thing that jesus made is to take mother mary to the best place in heaven the queen of made queen of heaven just like david as soon as he became a, uh, the king he brought the ark of the covenant and established in the most holy place praise the lord let's read gospel and we will see some connections also in the bible we read like these you know ark of the covenant uh, you know we all know mother mary is what is the most beautiful color of mother mary i mean the the uh, symbol of mother mary what color is the symbol of mother mary we all know is the blue color every time when, when mother mary uh, comes to the world, comes to these human beings to appear we uh, we normally know she has a blue color and blue color is the color of eternity color of eternity when when you look into the sky, uh, sky it is when it, the sky is clear it is blue in color when you look into the ocean when the ocean is silent and calm it looks in blue color so the blue is the sign of eternity and mother mary had the mantle of blue we all know this blue mantle and let's read numbers chapter 4 verse 5 and 6 when ark of the covenant they used to cover with a cloth when the camp is to set out aaron and his sons shall go in and take down the screening curtain and cover the ark of the covenant with it then they shall put on it covering of the fine leather as spread over the cloth of all of blue the ark of the covenant was covered by a mantle of blue blue color cloth was covering the ark of the covenant and we all know from the tradition mother mary's mantle color is also blue okay let's read luke chapter 1 verse 35 gospel of luke chapter 1 verse 35 we read like this angel said to her the holy spirit will come upon you the power of the most high will overshadow you therefore the child to be born will be holy the whole son of god so let's read exodus chapter 40 verse 34 and 35 exodus 40 4034 and then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the lord filled the tabernacle the covered the glory of god covering the tabernacle where the ark of the covenant the tent of meeting where the ark of the covenant is kept let's read luke 139 luke 139 we read like this in those days mary set out and went with haste to a judean town the hill country as soon as mother jesus was born in the mother mary's womb the first place where she was when this juda the place of juda judean town she went to that hill country a hill country on a hill there is a house she stayed there for 3 months and she went there 
to the Judean town in Judah. She is the, now she is an Ark of the Covenant. Before the Annunciation, she was not Ark of the Covenant in the sense that uh, Jesus was not there. But she is the Ark of the Covenant prepared by God to welcome, the, to be the pure fitting vessel for the Holy, our Lord Jesus Christ. And then what happened? The first place she was there after the Annunciation, after as soon as Jesus was born in the womb, she was in Judah, Judean town. Now, when Ark of the Covenant, where was it kept? Ark of the Covenant was kept on Judah. In, there was when it was in a house. The Ark of the Covenant was kept in a small house in Judah. We read like this, 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 2. 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 1 and 2. 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 1 and 2. We read like this. The word of God says, David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000 of them, and then verse 2. And David and all the people with him set out and went from Bali, Judah to bring up from there the ark of God which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts who is enthroned on the cherubim. Bali, Judah is the same place with Judah. He went to the Judean town to bring the ark of the covenant. So ark of the covenant was in the Judean town. And read Luke 143. Luke 143. We read like this. And when Mother Mary reached Elizabeth's house on Judean town, when Mother Mary saw Elizabeth and Elizabeth saw Mother Mary, then Elizabeth exclaimed and said, Why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? And she was so shocked to see the mother of the Lord comes to her. And she said, Why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? Now in the new in the another passage we see in the Old Testament, you see, when David saw the Ark of the Covenant, David also exclaimed like this, 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 9. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 9. We read like this. David was afraid of the Lord and that day and he said, how can the ark of the Lord come into my care? Almost similar expressions. How can the ark of the Lord come into me? Just like Elizabeth said, how, why has this my Lord, mother of my Lord comes to me? Now, David also make a similar expression. How can the ark of the Lord come into my care? Let's read Luke chapter 1 verse 41. Luke 141, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Child leaped, jumped and danced in front of the Ark of the Covenant. The, Mother Mary is the Ark of the Covenant. The moment the child saw Ark of the Covenant, the child inside the womb jumped and danced. And verse 42, and exclaimed with a loud cry, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And Elizabeth and the baby jumped and danced in the womb. As soon as they saw the Ark of the Covenant. Let's read 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 15. 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 15. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the Ark of the Lord with shouting with the sound of the trumpet. And then verse 16. And as the Ark of the Lord came into the city, David, Michal, daughter, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing. The same word that is you, leapt for joy. John the Baptist in the womb leaped for joy. As soon as he saw the Ark of the Covenant in front of. And here David is leaping and dancing before the Lord. The Ark of the Covenant. Inside the Ark of the Covenant is the presence of God. That is why they call before the Lord. And John the Baptist danced in the womb before the Lord. Because Mother Mary, inside Mother Mary, Jesus. Praise the Lord. And then Luke 156. 156 we read like this. And Mary remained with her about three months in the Judean town in that home. In that home, Mary remained there three months. Carrying Jesus inside the Ark of the Covenant remained in that house in Judean town three months. Let's read 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 11. The Ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obedom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obedom and all his household. The Ark of the Covenant re remained in the, the Judean town in the house of Obedom three months. Just like Mother Mary remained in the house of Elizabeth three months. After that she came to Jerusalem. From there, from Obedom's house, the Ark of the Covenant also was brought to Jerusalem. So there are so many connections that you can see where we see the Mother Mary is considered the Ark of Covenant. Ark of the Covenant. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Abba Father. Praise you, Father. Now we will continue reflecting about this connection in the Exodus book, book of Exodus, chapter 25, when God is asking them to make the Ark of the Covenant, what did God say? We will explain it tomorrow. And being tomorrow the feast of our Mother Mary, we will explain it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If there is. So let's close our eyes and pray. Let's thank the Lord for giving us this new Ark of the Covenant as a model and role model to lead us to the right track, the star that leads us to the right place. So wherever Ark of the Covenant remains, we will remain. 
where ark of the covenant goes we will go where there is mother mary we will follow her always and she will surely take us to jesus let's sing together the offertory hymn